has been telling us through his word Wednesday nights and on Sunday morning. I believe that he has a message for us this morning. I don't want us to forget what the Spirit's saying. Sister Dorothy reminded us that the Spirit is saying this, that we as a church, we are a people become full of fear. And before he can bring deliverance to us, we must put down this stronghold of this besetting sin of fear. Hebrews 12 and 1. What shall I fear or whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord God before me who can be against me? Well, Brother Doug, you just don't understand. No, I don't understand all things and I don't understand what you're going through with, but he does. And he's able. He has all things in his hand. Why should I fear? Why should I worry? Why should I wring my hands when he has all things under control? If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning. You want to keep your Bibles <coughs> by your side this morning. I believe this is a message from the Lord. I had another message uh, was working on. Lord willing, you'll hear it when, when he's ready, when he directs and leads and guides. But I spoke with my preacher friend again this week on the phone, and uh, he, he wasn't telling me what he preached on Sunday, and I had to urge him a little. And he began to tell me, and as he did, I felt the Holy Ghost of God run all up and down my soul. And uh, he said he felt the good Spirit of God too as we talked. The Spirit of God began to say, this is just what I want. A couple Sundays ago, I spoke on, directed, I believe, by the Lord, on children of the light. That we as a church are supposed to be children of the light. Last Sunday, the Holy Ghost directed me to preach on, I have seen a great light, that we might have light. I want to preach on this morning with God's help on being blinded, being blinded. First Peter, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. As we preach this this morning, here is where I want your heart to be, is God help me not to fall into blindness. God, don't allow me to let darkness, and I don't need to get details to you how darkness comes in your life. You already know it. Some get tired of hearing it from me. But Lord, I don't want to allow darkness of any kind to come into my life. And then I want you to think about those precious souls, our loved ones, who are blinded, that God might shine that light. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. For Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Isn't that wonderful to think about? He wanted to bring us to God. We didn't have to come begging Brother Danny to come to God. He wanted us. He desired us to come. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient. When once, listen, catch this, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Keep that in mind. I'm going to read that again so it sinks in. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, some 120 years, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Verse 21. The light figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All in his cross. All by the finished work that he done. As you start back towards Genesis, stop right quick in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith, Hebrews 11 and 7, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen. You realize God always sends warning before He sends judgment? 
always, always sends warning. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. When God says that you might not see it yet, but you will see it. It will happen. Moved with fear or with reverence and love. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By the faith that he placed in what God told him, by his faith that he placed in God, he became an heir of righteousness by that faith. Now flip over with me to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3 and you can pretty well... Besides here in a little while, keep your Bibles here in this area. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. And the Lord said, this, this is words we need to hear in this last day. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. Father, I thank you for your touch this morning. I thank you for the wonderful altar service we've already had this morning, for the wonderful Spirit of God that has come down and touched us and lifted us up, and we have rejoiced in you this morning. But Lord, I pray, help us to see that there is blindness all around us. Help us to see, God, there are souls that are slipping off into eternity without God. And the ark, the answer is right there in front of them. Salvation is right there. All they got to do is believe and get in. And yet they are willingly being blinded. Use this church, God, as you never used us before. Raise us up that we might be a light that shines forth Jesus Christ, that Christ Jesus might shine into the darkness. Lord, your word promised that if we lift you up, all men will be drawn unto you. Help us not to lift the church up. Help us not to lift one another up, but help us to lift Christ up. For you are the only answer, Lord. You are that ark of safety. In Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis 6, 5 through 7, he says this, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like to me 2018. continually evil. I see such evils come about and I think surely man cannot get any eviler or any meaner until the next day and you hear things that are so much worse. Continually the mind is on the things of the world. Listen, verse 6, And it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, Beasts were made for man. Now, you might not like that if you're a tree hugger. Oh, I'm getting off the PC stuff, ain't I? But beasts were made for mankind. Let me go on. And don't think I don't love animals. I love animals. Man, I love beef. I love chicken. I love pork. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Listen, this is shouting ground right here this morning. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter 4 verses 25. I told you to keep your Bibles here right close by Genesis 4 and verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again. Cain has killed Abel. God has provided means and ways, the sacrifice, and Cain refused that. But God raised up another seed. Aren't you thankful? God could have said, listen, this is the second chance I've given man here. And I, you know, man, I, I'm done with you, but he didn't. Listen. And, Abel, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth, for God said, she have appointed me another seed. Instead of Abel, 
whom Cain slew. When, when they say that, look at Genesis 3 and 15. He's talking about the lineage from which the seed of woman, Christ Jesus, our Messiah would come. You see, the devil wanted to stop that, Brother Gary, but the devil can't stop the work of God. He can't stop the work of salvation. He wants to stop the work of salvation in this day and time. He wants to blind man's eyes and blind the church's eyes, but he cannot stop the working of God. And to Seth, Listen, raise me up, appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew, verse 26, and to Seth and him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began man to call upon the name of the Lord. When Seth came, man began to see and began to call upon God. Some, those in that line, began to seek God. Now you see, when we come up to the flood, there is about a thousand years that the Holy Ghost of God has sought man. God, I read to you a while ago, He said that the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. I'm thankful that He's still seeking. I'm thankful, oh hallelujah, that He's still calling out. I'm thankful that He still desires us. What a long-suffering, loving God that we serve. But there is a time. There is a point. There is a place that God's love and God's mercy and God's justice then comes. We see this this morning in this story, how that God has said, My spirit will not always strive with man. Up to this time, for about a thousand years, God has continually sought man and sinned things, man's way. If you read in this chapter 5, you'll see those who loved the Lord. You'll see those who walked with God and was not. You'll see those who sought the things of God. And many around them saw these things, how God blessed in their life, and yet they turned away from the things of God and they were willingly blinded and they wanted not the things of God. You see, God's, God's people began to mix God's people began to mix with those who were against the things of God, just as God's people today mixes with the world. Church, you can't be a part of the world. There always need to be a distinction to where you can tell the church from the world and the world from the church. If we go to the same accesses that the world goes with, how are we going to reach down and lift people up? When, when, when you reach down in the ditch to lift somebody up, you don't get down in that ditch and wallow with them. You'll be no good to them. You can't help them. But you reach down and you say, listen, there's higher ground that Christ has created. There's a better place that we can go. We can stand on a solid rock and on a solid foundation, Christ Jesus. But God's people begin to mix and God knew that they had refused the right way and they would not go that way for almost a thousand years he has tried to direct them he has tried to show them time and time again that he is the way to keep their mind looking unto Jesus to keep their mind looking under that promised seed that one who would come and they would not they were willingly blinded they refused the right way here we find that God says in Genesis 6, and I read to you a while ago, verse 8, but Noah. Aren't you thankful that God has that grace available? All these people that we talk about, all those who perished in the flood could have had that grace. It was available. It was there. It was free. It wouldn't cost them anything. But for the lie, they did not want to believe. They did not want to give up on the things that they wanted to hold on to. And they were blinded, willingly blinded. You see, the Word of God tells us that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Why was Noah looked upon as perfect? I believe Noah had stumblings and falters and failures. He was a man. But why was he looked upon as perfect? Because he believed in God. You, you don't believe me? I read it to you in Hebrews 11 and 7. Hebrews 11 and 7 that I just read to you, he says he was just man. Why was he just? He was justified by faith in God. And what did that faith in God do? Did it lead him to run to the same accesses that the world was? No. If you have true faith in God, you'll not run to the accesses of the world. Oh, I know that goes against the grain. 
I know a lot of people say, oh, if I just only believe in God, then I can go out here and live any way, do anything, do any way that I won't know. If you truly believe in God, if you truly look to Him and accept Him by faith, then you want to walk in His walk and step in His step and be led and directed by Him. You want, as Noah did, as it was said in verse 9, you want to walk with God. And there's some places God ain't going to go with you. He ain't going to take you some places that you desire to go. Amen? No, he walked with God. He found grace. This is the first time that grace is mentioned in the Word of God. Noah obeyed God. God spoke to Noah. Verse 13, listen. And I'm going to try to hurry this morning. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Verse 18. But with thee, speaking of Noah, will I establish my covenant. Thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee. Verse 22. Listen. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Now I want you to think about this for just a moment. Noah, to this time, as, as we are led to know, they had never really seen rain, the Dew came up and it watered the ground and it brought the water that they needed. I know some people today would love that to happen now. Some builders and people that own building supplies and other things would love for that to happen. But that's not the way it works now. It rains. But it would water from... And they had never really seen rain. But here Noah is told to say, Listen, the heavens are going to open. Fountains of the deep are going to open. This water is going to be covered in water. And God has told me to prepare an ark, to make an ark, to the building, to the saving of our souls. And for 120 years, Noah did not move one ounce from the message that he preached daily as they built the ark. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. I, I've not been. They say it's a wonderful thing to go, and if you get the opportunity... I urge you to go. I'm not giving them advertisement. I'm just telling you. that that is it in Tennessee where they have Kentucky where they have tried to go by just exactly what they could looking in the Word and they have built the ark. And they say that it just baffles the mind when you top the hill and you look down and you see that huge ark. Think for just a moment. These people had never seen a sight like this before. Listen to the skeptics as they sit back and they say, well, Lord, he's foolish. He's done lost his mind. He ain't going to be able to build no ark. Look as the trees began to fall. Look as the work and the labor as Noah and his sons began to do what God told them to do. Listen to the world as they gather around and they mock and they make fun. Do they not the church today? Do not they mock and make fun? Brother Larry said in Sunday school class this morning how that it seems that God seems to be the punchline of everyone who wants to make a joke or ever comedian. But I want to tell you, my God is no joke. My God is long-suffering. My God is kind. My God is gentle. My God has great grace. But that one day will stop and judgment will be poured out. And judgment will come. Noah preached and he proclaimed this ark that we're building, this ark that we're preparing by the anointing and the Spirit of God Almighty that we're preparing here. It is for the saving of your soul because God loves you. Come into the ark when it's prepared in its time. Come into to the ark. How can men stand there? Listen to me. How could they see this great phenomena happen? I'm talking about they didn't have power tools. They didn't have Dewald and Milwaukee and all these other. They didn't have a place to plug in a, a, a saw. They didn't have any of these things. But they began to build by the power. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God. 
Man could not see this thing as it was put together and not realize that the Spirit had the anointing of God. How can man look at the church today and see that the church of God, I'm not talking about denomination, the church of God, the called out church of God, how can they not see the hand of God? Yeah, there's been fakes that's come along. There's been those who have tried to cause problems in the church. There's been all kinds of things. But the church, see it stands. The gates of hell, hallelujah. You might have to turn me down just a little, Katie, because I'm getting ready to get excited. The gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. Mm, Hallelujah. What a miracle. What a wonderful, fantastic thing to see the church by 12 Holy Ghost filled men who went out into the world and began to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, man got in there and tried to make do things wrong and make things wrong, but God's Word, you can search it out. Just, just to research this Word will baffle your mind to see how this precious Word of God came down to man. Even today, it needs no proof. The Word of God stands upon its own. It doesn't need proof. But even today, they find manuscripts that backs up just exactly what this book says. Oh, hallelujah. That was written that many years ago. You see, God's Word is true. It is yea. It is everlasting. It will stand upon its own. But yet man stand back and go. Yet man stand back and have skepticism. Why? Because they want to live in their sin. Because they want to do their way. They don't want to believe God. They don't want to see the things of God. They don't want, and it's hard for me to even begin to imagine. I can't hardly say this, but they don't want the goodness of God. How can anybody not want the goodness of God? I hear people don't like watermelon, and I think, how can you not like watermelon? Everybody ought to love watermelon. But the goodness of God is no comparison to anything. The psalmist said, Oh, taste and see how good my God is. It compares to nothing, His love and His mercy. But yet they did not want the things of God. They seen this miracle. But now wait just a moment. Not just the ark in itself was a miracle. Noah and the workers building were miracles. They've seen all these things and yet they refuse. But now, as time draws near, and we won't take time to read here in the Word, you can read the story. They see a phenomenal that should shake anybody to the core. They see unclean animals. Unclean that, they, that Noah and his family could not eat and could not use for sacrifice unto God. Unclean animals. They see them coming in in pyres. Does that not astound you sitting where you're sitting? I mean, you just think about there's Noah preaching. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost. And proclaiming Joshua, and maybe even tears in his eyes, realizing what is about to take place, realizing how near it is. Here comes a power of lines. Not bothering anybody. Not bothering any of the other animals that are getting on there. Something's going on. Something's happening. Something's taking place. Something's going on. Here they come and they walk on the ark and they take their place. Look and here comes a couple of giraffes. Why, you, you, you can't corner them. You can't domesticate them. You can't domesticate them. Here, here they come, and they come walking in. Here comes a couple of jackals. Noah obeyed God. I, I don't know why he didn't throw them ugly looking things off. But God, they serve a purpose. God knows far more than me. And here they come walking in and they're natural enemies of the line and they sit there and stare at one another. No fuss or fight. Animal after animal after animal after animal. Well, that's an impossibility. No, it's not. Some smart man, a lot smarter than me, has sat down, multiplied all the species of animal, multiplied the two of unclean and the seven of clean 
and have found out that there would be plenty of room left to put plenty of food also upon the ark. Can't be, it can always be with God. Let me tell you, even, even if his math had come out and said it was no way, I still believe God. Why God's able to bring to, to he, he, he made these things to begin with, did He not? Can He not multiply them? Did He not multiply the fishes and the bread? But can you just see this miracle taking place in front of man? I mean, I just had to got right in behind one of them, wouldn't you? I mean, I had to say, hey, if they got enough sense to get on, surely I've got enough sense to get on. But man mocked. Man laughed. Look today. Look today. How many people have passed by, not just our church, I'm not just singling our church out, not just singling this holler out, but how many people has passed by today churches that have the lights on that's preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And they know that it's a saving station. And they know it's a place that they can go. And they know the love of Christ dwells therein. And they know they'll not come and find condemnation, but they'll find the Spirit and the presence and the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. And they know they can find salvation and they can find a way to God. How many have passed by on their merry way and will not come inside the ark of safety? They refuse. They were willingly blinded. And they would not come. While the ark was preparing, God's Spirit was seeking, and Noah was preaching. Does that not sound familiar today? Does that not sound like today? While God's Word is going forth, God's Word is being preached across this land, God's Spirit is out seeking, is striving. Convicting, drawing, and yet man will not come. Listen, I've got to go on. Genesis 7, 22. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. God's justice wheels grind ever so slowly, but they grind ever so fine. Verse 23, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the earth, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Judgment is sure. Not one wave. I want you to listen to this. Because Noah believed God, because Noah trusted God, not one wave of that judgment touched Noah. He stepped in the ark, God shut the door, and he was safe and secure when the rains began to come. He could not perish. I want you to hear that. He could not perish. Some folks ain't going to like that, but he could not perish because the ark... could not perish. Listen to where this is going. Listen to me. He could not perish because the ark could not perish. The ark could not perish because God was in the ark. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The ark represents Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18. Through 19, Noah could not perish because he was in the ark. The ark could not perish because the ark was in God. And the ark showed forth Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18, And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. And by Jesus Christ, and have given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Listen. Listen. To wit that God was in Christ. Think of Christ as the ark. Reconciling, drawing the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in the ark. 
And Christ was that ark. And he tried to draw man into Christ and man would not. Think of today. You see, only those in the ark, only those in Christ are the ones that will be saved. I think of the rich young ruler, and I've got to hurry this morning, but I want you to hear this thing. I want you to grasp a hold of what I'm saying this morning. Think of the horror. And I don't have time to get into great detail, but think of the horror when that rain began to drop. Think of the horror as the fountains opened up and they began to see water come. Think of the horror as the father takes his family to the highest mountain that he can. And finally the water comes and it sweeps them away. Judgment is coming. That day will take place. But the ark, the door is open wide. But men are being blinded. I think about, when I think about this, two things, and I'm going to hush. Or three things. Very quickly. Being blinded. I think about the rich young ruler. A lot of people have different opinions about him, but I believe what the Word of God says. I believe by listening and seeing what the Word of God says, he was drawn by the Spirit to Christ. To this rich young ruler, what would Christ have had to offer if the Spirit had not sought him out and drawn him to him? And he comes to him and he says, Good Master, what must I do? You see, the Spirit had drawn him to Christ. The Spirit is drawing people everywhere. Why do you think they had to take these things and these pills to ease their mind? Why do you think they've got to drink and they've got to dope and drinking just as bad as doping? You can amen, man, old me, brother Doug, you're way off your rock or whatever, I'm telling you. One drug is bad as another drug. Why? Because they don't, they don't want to hear the Spirit of God. They want to dull their ears. They don't want to hear the Spirit of God calling them and drawing them and showing them the right way. That rich young ruler listened to the Spirit and he came to Christ. And he asked Christ sincerely. I believe he meant it with everything in him, Brother Gary. He wanted eternal life. He knew eternal life was available. He knew that, that somehow this was the very Son of God. Can you imagine walking up and looking in the eyes of Christ Jesus? And Christ knew his heart. He knew what possessed him. He knew what helped him. If he was willing to lay that down, then he could have all of Christ. And he could come inside the ark. But you know as well as I do that he turned. And he would not lay this world down. The Word of God tells us he walked away sorrowful. In other words, the way I see it, even though they say he was a rich young ruler, I see a poor man coming to Christ and riches being offered to him. And he turns and he walks away still a poor man. He was being blinded. Second thought I have this morning in, in the New Testament is in Matthew 28 and verse 17. 28 and 17. Listen. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Christ has been crucified. He has been resurrected. He has shown himself over to at least 500 people to prove he was the very Christ. Listen, they hear him stand, they see him, they listen to him. Some around him worship him. Did you see what it said? But some doubted. How could you doubt? Blinded. How can people today doubt? How can you read that book and see all these things and yet walk away from God? How can you feel the Spirit of Christ in your heart and in your life convicting and calling you and yet walk away being blinded? And then I think about it. I'm going to close. Revelation 6 and 16. Revelation 6 and 16. A lot of people talk about when the wrath of God is poured out in the book of Revelation. You see, I believe this Bible from cover to cover. A lot of people when they see the judgments in the book of Revelation, they think, 
Well, this is man blowing himself up. No, it's from the hand of God. It might be nuclear, but it'll be because God speaks. And when he does, the atoms split. It won't be because of man. How do you know that? Well, here in this chapter, verse I just told you, man see and know and proclaim it is, brother, pastor, it is the hand of God. They know it's the hand of God. They see it's the hand of God. They realize it's the hand of God. But listen to how hard-hearted they are. If they would turn and cry out, God, have mercy upon us. God, how blinded have we been. How crazy. God, forgive us. But that's not what they cry out. Listen to their cry. This is the cry today of man. This is the cry right now in 2018. Not when Revelation... This is the cry. Let the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of God. Blinded. I know people today that know. I know they know that there is salvation, that there is deliverance, that things can be different in their lives. And yet they will not come to Christ. They are being blinded. Church, where should that drive us to? That should drive us to be a light for Christ Jesus as we've never been before. We have family, neighbors, loved ones that are slipping off into eternity without God. The flood's coming. The raft of God is coming. God is coming to take him, His people from this earth and this earth is going to see wrath as it has never seen before. Come into safety. Come into safety. Let us as a church proclaim as we've never proclaimed before that there is salvation. There is deliverance. Whew, glory be to God. There is power inside the ark. Why do we want to be calm? I'm going to hush. I'm sorry, I just can't hush. Why do we as a church want to be playing footsie? Can I just get plain? I'm, I'm just going to get plain. I'm not going to get mean. I'm going to get plain. We want to be outside of the ark playing footsie with the devil. The rain's coming. But God, I look up and I see storm clouds. I see lightning already begin to form. I see darkness already trying to come and take the earth. Why do I want to be outside of the ark, fooling around with the God, with the enemy, and with the devil? I want to get right in the. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. But Bobby, I want to get right in that ark. I want to get right in the safest place because the storm's coming. Father, Holy Ghost of God. Lord, I love you this morning. Thank you for this word. This word has touched me this morning if it's touched no one else. God, there's so many souls. Good people. People that I love. People that I know love me. But they're lost. They're outside of the ark. They know the ark's real. They know there's salvation inside of the ark. They know there's a way to God. They know there's hope. And yet they're being blinded. Use me, God, as you've never used me before. Use this church as you've never used us before to touch this world for you. Lord, I pray that you help me. Help me, Lord, when, when, when the Holy Ghost speaks to me and says that's blindness trying to come into your life. Help me, dear Lord, that a standard of your word, that a standard of your holiness, that a standard of your righteousness.
would be raised against that darkness. Lord, as the head of my home, help me not to allow darkness to come in and infiltrate. Help me not to allow darkness to come into my life, but help the light of Jesus Christ to shine more brighter than it ever has before. Help me, Lord, to get my eyes centered upon Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Lord, as I stand here this morning, I think of loved ones. Lord, I ask that you stir them, God, that you shake them somehow. Open their eyes of understanding. Help the light to shine so brightly that the scales will fall from their eyes. Sharpen their ears, God, so they might hear and quit being dull of hearing. Help them to see, God, it's not a joke, it's not a plaything. Help them to see its reality. Judgment's coming. Blindness is all around us and judgment is coming. Open eyes, God. Lord, there's one way that the church can reach souls. And that is when we lift Christ Jesus up.